here's one told in poetic style. The face of the father and our continuing estrangement, he is a running riddle and a fluid answer, he is a mighty allegory of the fallen resurrection of mankind, he is a fable, symphony and nightmare, he is a beautiful and monstrous enigma beckoning imperiously from the shadowy pits of sleep, his mechanics resemble those of a dream, a dream which has freed him from the necessities of common logic and has enabled him to compress all periods of history and all phases of individual development into a circular design. Every part is beginning middle and end, in a gigantic wheeling rebus, dim effigies rumble past and disappear into foggy horizons and are replaced by other images vague but half-consciously familiar. On this revolving stage, mythological heroes and events of remotest antiquity occupy the same spatial and temporal planes as modern personages and contemporary happenings. All time occurs simultaneously and merges in a single precept. Multiple meanings are present in every line, interlocking allusions to key words and phrases are woven like fugal themes into the pattern of the work. His work is a prodigious multifaceted monolith, not only the core chemer of a geometric dance, but the dreamlike saga of guilt stained evolving humanity. The vast scope and intricate structure of his work gives it a forbidding aspect of impenetrability. It appears to be a dense and baffling jungle, trackless and overgrown with wanton perversities of form, shape, color and language. Clearly the work of the father is not meant to be idly tinkered with. It tasks the imagination, it exacts discipline and tenacity from those who would seek understanding. Yet some of the difficulties disappear as soon as the well-disposed observer picks up a few compass clues and gets his bearings. Then the enormous map of the father's work begins slowly to unfold. Characters and motifs emerge, themes become recognizable and the father's vocabulary falls more and more familiarly on the accustomed ear. Complete understanding is not to be snatched at greedily in one sitting. The ultimate state of the intelligent observer is certainly not bewilderment, rather, it is an admiration for the unifying insight, economy of memes and revelations which have miraculously quickened stupendous knowledge. One acknowledges at last that the father's overwhelming micro-macrocosm could not have been fired to life in any sorcerer's furnace less black, less heavy, and less murky than this his incredible work. The father had to smelt humanity back to protein plasma and reenact the genesis and mutation of his work in order to deliver his message. But the final miracle is that such a message could be delivered at all.